Hey guys, welcome back to Ray's Create Cards. I'm Ray Henderson, a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Morristown, Tennessee, which is East Tennessee. Fall is rapidly approaching, and I'm not done with uh, making the fall cards, but I thought we would venture yet again into the Christmas arena. And uh, so I decided I wanted to use the Joy of Noel. This is my first time to even get into this set. I've, I've got several sitting here. It's time, y'all. All right. It's having time to get in there and play with stuff. So Joy of Noel. And it is on page 29. In fact, there's a whole suite. You can order... Um, just the, um, Joy of Noel stamps and dies, just the stamps, the dies. There's actually two different, uh, packets of designer series paper, what we call DSP, that coordinate with this, along with some bling and some other goodies. So, um, I'm starting out with the Joy of Christmas paper. Most of you, I'm sure, already have it. If you don't, this is a pattern we're going to be using today. And it's kind of a, it's really pretty. It's watercolory look on the whole thing. And so we are going to be stamping and using this element right here in the stamp set. And I had to figure out how to color it with the stamping blend so that it would blend in with this. Because the very first time I went to color it, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the back and, and the colors that are in there, the mossy meadow, the shaded spruce, yada, yada. And when I colored it, it just, it just didn't look right. It didn't look right at all. So I kind of figured out a method for making it blend and not look so odd. Because if you color it, try to color it straight, it, it's just not going to work. It's not going to work. Um, you've got your mossy meadow and your shaded spruce and your, I think that's granny apple green. Let's see. Um, shaded spruce, old olive, real red, cherry cobbler, pecan pie, pebble path. And it doesn't really tell you what that light green was. But I figured out when I started getting into this that I could use my light granny apple green and that tied in really well with those lighter tones that you're seeing in the paper. If you haven't seen this, this is a wonderful pack of paper um, for making more masculine-themed uh, Christmas cards. I mean, it's just beautiful. And here is the same print, but in miniature. Much smaller, tighter print. Let's see what's on the back side here. And here we have musical notes. And here is just some greenery. I mean, you could use that all year long, right? And you do get two sheets of everything. I think that is so pretty. I'm loving this. And I love all the colors that they used and put together. Love it, love it. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. I did um, also bring in and use the embossing folder, that Distress Tiled 3D embossing folder also in the mini catalog. I used real red ink and uh, I brought a little bit of black in. So here is my sample card that I made and I love my skinny borders, but this was one time I thought, you know, I really wished I had done my layer here at four by five and a quarter. So on today's card, that is what we're going to do. And I will tell you the dimensions of all the layers, but I don't know if you can kind of see the way I colored that element, and I definitely want to do that on screen with you um, so you can see what my methodology was. If you've got this paper and you have stamping blends, um, maybe this will help some of you uh, kind of get your elements to blend in with this um, designer series paper. It's so pretty. Okay, we are going to have a real red card base, typical, typical, Eight and a half by uh, five and a half and scored at four and a quarter. I mean, nothing unusual there. And then we're going to have our piece of four by five and a quarter 
uh, designer series paper, and I really like a little bit more of that real red peeking out around the edge than in my sample card, okay? I have already stamped our image that we're going to use, and I did that uh, to make sure it was all good and dry uh, so that the ink blends don't smear the ink, okay? So I prepped that. We are going to have a piece of red. This is cut at three and three quarters by two. No, no, sorry, sorry. Back up, back up. Four and a quarter by three on this one. And that layer will go there. And then I've got a layer of black that is four by two and three quarters that will lay right on top of that. And then we're gonna have a white piece that is three and three quarters by two and a half, and I did emboss it with that um, Distress Tile 3D embossing folder, and that's gonna go on the very top. For the sentiment that we were going to do on the outside, I brought out my retired scallop, no, my, my retired oval shapes. Layering oval is what they were called. Wish they hadn't retired. They did retire. And so I've cut one out of black cardstock. And we're going to do some heat embossing with white embossing powder on the red. And then die cut that real quick to layer right here on the top. Uh, let me bring back in my sample again. So it's hopefully going to turn out as well as that one did. Okay. All right. But now the hardest part is going to be coloring this. And before I do that, I need to make sure I have got my dies ready. I do. Because I'm going to actually die cut it over to the side. I'm not even going to try to bring in my, my big boss to do this. All right. As we start to do this, it is going to look like a hot mess. I mean, it just is. But by the time we're done, I think you'll see how it kind of all comes together. And I'm going to be using the dark shaded spruce. And there's quite a bit of that shaded spruce in that DSP. And so I found that if I just take and just follow pretty much the lines that the artist has already given us, and I'm even doing the stems, I'm simply going to follow this one and just outlining those stems, and it's okay if your uh, drawing is a little thicker, if it's a little longer, it's fine, not a problem. Just want to make sure that I don't uh, mess up any of my, my stems here, and I'm just going to take and try to put just a little bit of color out into the leaves here, even though nothing is drawn there. I'm still gonna try to bring some of that color because we're gonna blend it anyway. And like I said, yes, it's gonna look like a hot mess. Absolutely. Um, and I did it with all the leaves. I did them all the same with all the same colors. Um, let me turn this a little bit. This one here, he's kind of little. So we've got him and trying to make sure I'm not overlooking any of my stems, even on the uh, berries. I want those done too. And let me get this one. And I've got these stems right here. Um, yep, missing that one. Need to get that one. Am I missing? Yep, these little berries right there. And on some of this, I really did want to come up with just a little bit more of that shaded spruce. And I'm not being, you know, just really particularly careful because as I said, it, it's going to blend. Okay, once you're satisfied with your dark shaded spruce, you are going to bring in your light mossy meadow. And I, I'm having issues with this one, it's not really wanting to come out just real well, but I basically just took some of that mossy meadow, didn't matter if it kind of went out of the lines a little bit, and I'm just streaking the color all through the leaves, just bringing it up and out. 
Doesn't matter if it's a holly leaf or whatever that other leaf is supposed to be, really doesn't matter. I'm just getting some of that tones of that mossy meadow in there. And same here. Like I said, it looks ugly, looks like a hot mess, but I promise you it'll come out just fine, truly. And let's see, do I have all the leaves? I do. I found that if I brought in the light granny apple green, that that really uh, made a difference. And I'm struggling with this one as well, having enough uh, ink in it, enough of that juicy juice. And I'm actually even just kind of bringing that out and not really caring if you know, I'm obviously not in the lines. I'm just laying down some of that color. I'm just going to try to kind of sort of blend that out. But you got to understand, this paper was watercolor. And I honestly have not been practicing my watercolor. Just haven't. Um... We can actually even put some of that color in between the leaves. That's fine, too. I'm going to add a little bit more right there. I'm going to bring some right down in here. And again, if you go out of the lines a little bit, it just adds to that watercolor effect. It will. Bring that probably should have put more, I think on my original one, I may have used a little bit more mossy meadow than what I did here on this one, but it's okay. All right, now let's get ready and do the berries. And yes, I am. I'm going to bring that mossy meadow in. And I want to put just a little bit of mossy meadow right in here for those any place else where I need to bring it. I think we're okay. All right, and so now I have my light real red, my dark real red. And these are fairly new, so I'm not having issues with them. And so I took my dark real red and I just filled in a little bit of color at the base of each berry. Just a little bit. Oh, I see I missed one. Let me let me back up and get my shaded spruce. Get that one. And then back up to my mossy meadow. Get some of that in there. And then a little bit of our light granny apple green. And put some of that tones around it. There we go. All right, back to the dark real red. Just a little bit at the base. Doesn't have to be a whole lot. There's really a lot more going on in here than what you would think. And I, I just keep finding things I've missed. And I did that the first time too. I'm going to go back to my mossy meadow because I didn't put any mossy meadow in here. I'm going to put some in there. And then we're going to go back to the light granny apple green. And we're going to kind of put some of the hint of that color in there around it. Right down here. Good, good. No two cards will be the same when you do this, right? And now I'm going to go to my light real red. And all I'm simply doing is I'm taking and I'm just drawing around the rest of the berry and I'm leaving my little highlight in there, like so, and like so. Okay, just leaving a little highlight where the light would be hitting it. Okay, and again, if you go a little bit outside the lines, it's not going to matter. But honestly, I mean, you do this once or twice, you'll get the hang of it, and you'll just be stamping these and coloring them to your heart's content. 
Now there is an issue with those berries. The light and the red are so close together, I've lost my dark tone here at the bottom. And one of the reds that is in here is cherry cobbler, okay? So, I don't have a cherry cobbler Stampin' Blends, so I got out my Dark Berry Burst. And when you apply the Dark Berry Burst with that dark red at the bottom of the berries, it makes cherry cobbler. So, I'm just going to take this and kind of fill that in to give that a little bit of dimension at the base where I lost it. Because it just blended in so quick with the light red that I lost that deepness. If you don't have berry burst, then I would go over it a couple of layers with the dark again and try to get that shading back in there. But it just totally disappeared. Okay. Okay. I think we're okay there. We're good. We are good, but I am still wanting a little bit more of that light granny apple green coming into some of this. I'm just going to fill in just a little bit more of some of that granny apple green around the perimeter, around the berries, where it looks kind of skimpy. It does, just looks a little skimpy. Fill in just a little bit more. And there we go, that should be good. That should be pretty good. I'm gonna come out from the poly here, just a little bit, kind of feather some of that out. There we go. We're good. Good, good. All right. I am going to get my big, not my big shot, my big boss over here to the side. Get him set up ever so quickly and die cut that. And it won't take but just a hot second here. Um, if I knew what I did with my die. What did I do with it? So I'm kind of under the gun here, guys. I am uh, furiously trying to get a few videos ahead so that when I'm out of town, there is still some good stuff going on for you guys. Um, because I sure won't be able to film and upload videos uh, while I'm gone. And... Uh, I'll be gone quite a bit the month of October. Well, I say quite a bit. It, it's a nice little chunk. Okay, we have got that cut out. Let me put my die back in here. And we will start getting ready to assemble the card. But we also have to do our sentiment. So, let me get my... just going to move this over to the side for a minute. I'm going to get my red scrap here. And I need my Joyous mounted on a stamp. Let me find my Joyous. Okay, here's my Joyous. Do I have a block to put it on? Because, uh-oh, all my blocks are in the kitchen. They got their bath last night at the kitchen sink. Ooh, that's awfully, hmm-hmm. <laughs> Um, well, I've got this one. That's awfully big, but I think I can make it work. It's not a good idea to have a block that is way bigger than your, um, uh, stamp because that it can, it can set you up for bad stamping. And I'm just going to be very, very careful with this anti-static powder. I really am. Not real happy with that bag. Um, I struggle with those little powder bags that a lot of people use. So, I'm looking for an alternative. I actually think I found it sometime back. But, uh, we'll see. Alright, so I've got this inked up. And I just want to stamp it kind of in the middle where I've got that 
space right there. I'm going to hold it for just a second. Try to make sure that Versamark, that sticky ink, gets on there really well. There we go. Then I'm going to get my white embossing powder and get that prepped for the heat tool. There we go. Now yeah, there's not too much laying on there. I think I'm kind of happy with that. But yeah, I'm actually looking at buying and trying Rabbit Holes Design uh, Powder Tool. They use totally different powder than what everybody else uses. And I have watched several videos. I have read all of the reviews. I've seen so many people using it in their videos. So um, one of these days I will be ordering that. And I'll let you know from my perspective. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on so it can be getting heated up. And then we'll get this embossed and we'll get this die cut. It should be good and hot. I don't know if you'll be able to see this turn and get really white. There it goes. I hope you can see it. Once this thing heats up, man, it goes. And I'm double checking to look for any any spots that may not have completely melted. There we go. I'm gonna let that cool for just a minute. And I am going to go ahead and get out my, my oval that I wanna cut that out with. Um, I don't know what to tell you what size I'm using if you have this set. But when you stamp it, you'll figure it out real quick. If you've got these dies and you want to use them like I did, then, um, yeah, you, you'll figure out which size goes right around it. So I don't want to cut off any of my J. I'm standing up on my tippy toes trying to make sure this is straight. I've got some used post-it note tape here. And... I'm feeling of this too to see if it's all cooled off and it yeah feels like it is so let me run that through real quick and we'll be done I really wanted to try to use that double oval punch however it wasn't quite big enough but I'm loving the font on that joyous and I just think doesn't it put a smile on your face when you see it I think it does all right, get that off. I think I can get another use out of these two. So I'm just going to lay them to the side. Bring this out. Oh, isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? And that's going to just layer perfectly on top of that scallop. And I've got a little piece of white cardstock there. All right, you know me. i got to put my die up. Got to, got to, got to. And I have already prepped the inside of my card. I'm having some issues with my real red stamp pad. Haven't totally figured it out yet, but uh, I thought, well, let's just go ahead and, and we'll put that on there and that'll be done. So let's go ahead and get ready to put this on. Let me cover up my little tip. These are little uh, fine tips are so awesome, but they sure will clog up in a New York minute. Let's lay this on here, slide it, make sure I'm straight on my oval. There we go. I'm just going to press that down. I'm going to kind of just gently scooch him over so he can be drying. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start layering everything on the front of our card. Isn't that pretty, though? That is so pretty. I can see so many things you could do with that pebble path color and that uh, wood grain look. Absolutely, I can. It would lend itself real well for using some of those wonderful new metallic papers that we have. And speaking of metallic, um, 
I wonder how many of you ordered. So we had that really pretty, also in the mini catalog, that, um, that pink and that green metallic paper. I ordered it and uh, have already made a card with it using that Marius Trees bundle. And so I'm thinking of revisiting that and showing you how you can use that metallic paper for Christmas. Metallics um, can be pretty strong, right? They can overpower and they can be like in your face. But there is a way to use them so that um, they're not so in your face and, and actually make a very delightful and cute design. So here we go. I did some skipping right there. Let's fill that in. I'm going to put this layer on here. And don't be afraid, guys. Get get your stuff out and, and look at it and figure out um, what you wanna what you wanna do until you go into your card room or your uh, crafting space, wherever that is, and just get it out and start playing and start thinking and looking at your supplies. Um, it it can be hard to find inspiration. It really can. But that's what I do. I just go in there and I look at my stamp set or I look at my DSP that I'm itching to get into. And I just simply look and see um, and start, you know, thinking and planning and measuring. And yeah, it's an awesome process. And it's so therapeutic. All right, let me get my lid back on there. And... Here is this, and I have got this, and you do you. Um, in my original card, I tilted it because, and it doesn't matter which way you tilt it, um, I didn't really care for it straight up and down. It just didn't seem to have the same personality, so I'm going to tilt mine a little bit, and you will notice for the most part, even though I'm going to tilt it, Everything is still pretty much within the borders of the white layer on top. And I didn't pop it up with dimensionals. However, I did the sentiment. And we're going to do that too here in just a second. All right. That should be good. And we're just going to kind of tilt this. Yeah, about like so. Okay, so I'm press down. And because I use Barely Art glue, if I got a little bit of glue up under here when it dries, it's not going to be sticky. Nothing's going to be trying to stick to it. Um, Tombow is great. Tombow definitely has its uses. And I don't know how many of you know, Tombow is a wonderful temporary adhesive. You can take and apply the glue and kind of let it dry and it's still tacky. And that can serve uh, to your advantage, uh, depending on, you know, what you're needing to do in your craft room. Now, dimensionals. Here we go. All right. Let's go ahead and get him on here, and then we will glue our inside layer in. Yeah, I'm going to have to get a hold of my real red ink pad and kind of figure out why it is being... Um, it's, it's kind of weird. Like, I don't think my ink is evenly dispersed. I really think that's one of my issues because in working with it, I tried it like two or three times and I get some light and dark areas. So, and I did too, when I stamped my sentiment on the inside that also comes from the joy of Noel. And I was in here playing with the, uh, the Noel, and it die cuts like a dream. Okay, I want to come, I want a little bit of that white peeking out on both sides and at the bottom. I feel like that kind of frames out a little bit. And originally, what I used was a retired bling. Love these things, they were the champagne rhinestones. And I chose to use them because you've got your brown tones, your dark and light brown tones of your um, pine cones. Um, however, 
it's going to be different on every card. So, you know, absolutely whatever bling you want to add, you add. And let's go ahead. I stamp that Making Spirits Bright. Yeah, it looks like I might have got a little something, something right there. But you see how it's kind of faded a little bit right there on my M? And it didn't do as bad when, when I stamped it this time as what it has been doing. But even moving it around on my stamp pad. So, I may just have to uh, get a uh, gift card and... Uh, Kind of move that ink around a little bit because I don't think it's too dry. In a lot of places, it was stamping pretty juicy. Okay. Well, the days are definitely a lot shorter. And the temps at night are a lot cooler. And so, I am so hoping that we have a smooth transition into winter. All right, guys, so what do you think of that? Let me bring it back in my sample card. But see what I mean about having uh, not such a skinny border on this particular design? You know, it just depends on your design as to whether you're going to want a skinny border or a traditional border. But there you go. And, I mean, that kind of blends in with these colors and this watercolor look. A little bit better than if you had gone in there and just tried to stamp it straight right let me know what you think down in the comments below guys and uh, I hope y'all have a very blessed weekend be safe God is good all the time and don't forget raise credit cards at stampingup.net if you order is $40 or more before tax and shipping and you use this host code, I will definitely send you a free gift. All right. Take care. Know you're loved. Bye.